Well, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to welcome you all in. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome back to the SRL TV channel. Um, sorry for the technical hitches we had at the start there. Uh, we struggled to get the broadcast actually going, but now we've squashed that issue. There's one secret button that we eventually found, and uh, it turns out that that was the answer to uh, all our troubles. But... We are currently in the session with all the guys racing in this TCR event today. We are in the media race, so no points on the table for any driver and no points coming out of any of these races today. It is purely for enjoyment and uh, while well, you guys get to enjoy all the slips, trips and falls as things progress on here alton park circuit. You can see we have a lovely warm temperature out there today of 23 degrees track length of 4.29 kilometers um so i'd say uh to my knowledge it's one of the longer tracks obviously not as big as uh, the likes of silverstone um but we are in for an absolute treat here tonight with a lot of races on the cars now we do have some familiar names in these sessions as well uh, so we're going to have some familiar names coming back to you that uh, you might recognize from other series or maybe even the last time you saw SRL live. So what we'll do is we'll bring you up those names now. Now the roster you can see on your screen. Those are, well, one, a lot of races. And uh, two, there are some familiar names that are coming back for more. They want more. Such as obviously Dan Mole, John Brown, the guys that help uh, create the SRL racing leagues. You know, they help to get this all underway. You do have uh, the likes of Arthur Thurtle out there today as well. And uh, some people from uh, one of my team, no, my team, uh, Chris Barnes, Rob Williams. You do have uh, those out there. Um, Deck Crowther and his walking stick with his old age. He is out there as well at the moment, Stuart Gibbons, Stuart Rice. Uh, we do have some new names out there as well. And I'm going to put out a apology straight away. That I uh, sincerely apologize if I end up butchering anyone's names here tonight. This is a, well, it could be a catastrophe in terms of uh, pronunciation. So we will see what happens, but fingers crossed, <laughs> everything goes smoothly. So, um, yeah, I look forward to bringing you guys in on all the action. Uh, Average Sim Racer, welcome in on the YouTube chat there as well. So, with no points on the board today, all we have to look forward to is the racing that lies ahead of us. Um, and, well, we're in. We're going to be treated to some good racing here tonight. We have some good fast-paced people out there, and it's uh, one of the more popular UK tracks as well. So um, plenty of, I'm sure, great racing, but at the same time, shenanigans. Um, there is going to be a lot going on. So look forward to bringing you all of that action at the minute. And, uh, well, let's start off with going from the top of the board. They are sort of towards the end of qualifying, um, but we do have Kim Andre Bjorklund up top at the minute as well with Thomas Cope in P2. Adam Delmont in P3 as well there. So uh, those guys are the quicker runners. Arthur Thurtle's currently chasing that time and trying to get onto a podium spot on that grid start for the first race here. Um, he's currently sitting just outside of that in P4. One tenth away from uh, getting up there and well, we've just had a uh, Someone put Arthur Thurtle down. Well, I say that. I'll correct myself. Arthur Thurtle put himself pole with a fantastic time of 1 minute 43.6. But I was going to say, um, Andy Lovesy has sort of pushed his way up onto the podium. But then Adam Down wants sort of trying to keep up there as well. Thomas Cope then leapfrogs everyone and gets into the podium spot. So he is up on his time at the minute as well. What we'll do is we will grab the logos of the cars that these guys are using. So you can see the Audi and the Hyundai are the two favourites out there tonight as well. Um, we do have Hanmer who has decided to uh, either stay up really late or get up really early in the morning for this race. Obviously being the uh, one of the only Aussies that I can see out there on track at the moment. We'll get one of the full names up as well so you can see who is who. Uh, we do currently have a few people sitting in the pits but Arthur Thurtle does lead the way. Not by much. The... Uh, interval between them you can see how tight it really is there Adam Delmon and Andy Lovesey have uh, really got nothing between those two at all um, that is probably the closest gap in the entire table at the moment
So there is a slight change tonight as well. Uh, obviously, I am in the booth on my lonesome here tonight. Um, a return to the booth as well. It's been a, a long old time since uh, I was I was here, and uh, I look forward to every single second of it. So fingers crossed, we will be uh, looking forward to some great stuff here as we round off, or we're looking at rounding off the early qualifying uh, into what is going to be some nice sort of late night chilled race and like i say it is media day so people i think are going to be a little more relaxed or i'd like to think they're going to be a little more relaxed we'll see what happens um but it is going to be a load of fun watching these guys sort of go hammer and fist at it and uh well i'd be looking at trying to make an early statement now what we'll do is throughout the season i imagine we'll get a few people in into the uh, commentary booth as well and I can kind of give you the inputs from them, uh, thinking as a racing driver out there on the track, you know, what is going through their mind. But what we will do is we will bring you the grid. So, starting from the top, Arthur Thurtle leads the way. Adam Delmont, P2. Kim Andre Bjorklund, P3. Thomas Cope, P4. Andy Lovesey, P5. John Brown, P6. Patrick Faulkner in P7. Adam McNally in P8. Uh, Neil Stevenson, P9, Mark Draper, P10, Deck Crowther, P11, and Stephen Fry rounds off the first page in P12 as we scroll down. Philip Grace, P13, followed by Craig Walters, Daniel Sedgley, Stuart Gibbons, Tyson Hammer, Dan Mould. Um, oh, I'm going to say it's Deju. And then you've got Daniel Lewis. Then you've got Scott Malcolm, Ricardo Neto, Alan McCain, Grant Yingling. I'm sorry if I'm butchering any of these, but Fraser Elphick, uh, David Vander. I didn't catch the end of that name. There we go. Van der Waals, uh, Chris Barnes, Christoph Boris, and Fraser Garrity, Connor Craven, Joe Pirro, Stuart Rice, Danny Fury Martin, Jay Corley, and Mr. Robert Williams rounding off the top 35 there. So let's have a little look at Mr. Del Mont, who is uh, on the front row of the grid. And you can see there is sort of a bump and a hill and a a skip and a jump on the uh, way down through the oh, well I would normally say home straight but it's not really straight there is a bit of a curve to it and there he is the man who's going to be leading the way Mr. Arthur Thurtle who I'm sure will be looking for a, uh, a good start here and hopefully to maintain that dominance all the way around this track but there are 35 cars out on track here tonight and uh well don't get me wrong it will give us some good racing but they, it could also be some uh, really tight situations with what's going on here as we get the five red lights off and we are underway good start from what we see from all the grid at the beginning there it seems like there's a couple of cars going wide straight away and uh, we'll get a bit of a wider view. You can see there's a little bit of contact a bit further down into P7 and 8. There's cars going around. I think it's Patrick Falcon and Adam McNally involved there in turn 1. Those two have gone wide, but our top three are still very close together. Arthur Thought was trying to fend off and uh, keep that lead of the race as he keeps the inside line and uh, pushes out into P1. Maintains that uh, early lead from a good start there. Kim Andre Bjorklund just in behind as well. And then as we look a little further down the grid, here's John Brown. He's kind of in the mix of it at the minute with Andy Lovesey just in front as well. Obviously, Andy Lovesey having that really close time in qualifying. You can see P2 and P3 there. Adam Delmont and Kim Andre Borkland are also side by side. So they're going to be itching to get past each other and uh, exchanging some paint, I imagine, as time goes on. Let's go a bit further down. You've got Ricardo Neto back here as well, uh, trying to hold off from Chris Barnes from the early attack. We have someone off. It looks like Tyson the man from Australia trying to catch on to him but there's so many cars going by there he is uh, unfortunately off at the side of the track uh, we did have a disconnect on the grid from Dan oh that's not good whatsoever right on the grid as well the final hurdle and there's been a disconnect and oh it looks like we've lost possibly Kim Andre Bjorklund no nope. no that's fine my timing tower is telling me incorrectly Kim Andre is still fighting out to try and uh, maintain in that sort of podium spots because any kind of slip up right now and uh, Tom Scope is going to quickly pounce on that. No issues at all there. You can see he's trying to get his nose up the inside as Thomas and he kind of holds it there but there's a bit of contact on the way out. Luckily because they're front wheel drive he keeps nice control of that as Andy Lovesey makes the pass and moves up into P4. 
uh, Fraser Garrity and uh, Grant Yingling back here uh, battling it out. Well, they were they were battling out anyway. They were close. I think it was more Fraser Garrity and uh, Craig Walters, in actual fact. And uh, we will look at trying to get the paints back up. I think there might need to be a, a cheeky little refresh. Um, don't mind me. Uh, so we'll get those paints back up for you guys as well, so you can see exactly what these cars look like in their true flesh and blood, rather than uh, what iRacing says they look like. Let's have a little look at where one of the returning names are then of Dan Mould. You can see his lovely handsome face down there in the bottom left corner of your screens. And as he goes by in his uh, Honda there, just behind Philip Grace and in front of Mark Draper. Uh, he's not doing a bad job whatsoever, is Mr. Mould. He's going to want to try and push up as quick as he can, though, because the pack is starting to lose away from our leader. There's a second gap that has opened up, and that is slowly getting further and further apart of the top two. So, Adam Delmont, half a third off, slowly pulling away from each other. Now, this is a tight battle. P7 here at the minute. Neil Stevenson trying to uh, sort of fend off two cars at once. He got kind of caught in the middle there. Sandwich. A lot of contact between Adam McNally there and uh, Neil Stevenson. Oh, my tongue's acting like a bowl of spaghetti in the minute. It's all over the place and I'm struggling to get my words out as these cars come through again for lap two. Going on to lap three. The SRL black, or so I say, matte grey and gold livery there of Adam McNally comes around once again. There's Dan Mould. Mark Draper just in behind. Here's Patrick Falconer, who is a familiar name amongst uh, a few leagues, and obviously you've all heard him few and far between through uh, multiple different series. And uh, he goes round onto the start finish straight. Now I'm going to go with the name is pronounced J B Dijou. Um, I apologies. I apologise if I'm uh, mispronouncing that. Uh, if I am, please do correct me in the Discord. But unfortunately, Deju has gone wide and off track. He's going to concede a few positions to Ricardo Neto, uh, being one of them. Alan McCain being another. So they've pounced on that situation, and uh, he's tucked in just ahead of Chris Barnes. Now, can Chris Barnes get his foot down and uh, try and get the move done? You can see in the cockpit view here we are sitting quite far back because this tends to be how far back I sit in these cars. Um, but you can see the entire windscreen there, and you can see how kind of close these cars are sitting. You only just see the full cars. It does pull away a little bit, but Chris was probably going to catch up now onto this tight right hand, and it is slightly banked as well. So if you get the banking right, you can get a fantastic exit, which is what Chris Barnes is aiming to do as we get back here with Thomas Cope near the front end of the field, trying to chase Andy Lovesey. Just in behind that, with a bit of a gap to the car ahead, is John Brown. Now, uh, he does look like he's got a bit of damage there. It looks like his car's sort of turning his nose up a bit of being at Oldham Park by the looks of things as you look at that Audi from front on. We did have some early outgoers. Let's see what Mr. Rice is doing. Uh, race of uh, Mr. Rice several times within GT4, so it's a bit of a different scenery to see him in a TCR, but it's not something I'm against. Jake Hawley just in behind that as well. And uh, I've been interacting with Jay Corley in some of the other bits he's been doing outside of racing. And I have to say they're fantastic. So uh, that's always good fun there. And ooh, we have a bit of carnage there. Oh, no. See, I'm going to go with that's Christoph. But we're going to call him Boris. Boris is off the track. And uh, the number 66 car is going to have no momentum coming down this back straight. As Danny Fury Martin has taken the position. The same with Joe Pirro. And oh, so by side there are Craig Walters. And uh, Walters has gone through with a beautiful looking livery, I must say. Um, that probably took a little bit of time, judging from that. But fantastic looking cars out there today. Fraser Garrity just in behind as well in the uh, white, blue, and black car that does stand out quite nicely here at Alton Park. Grant here towards the back as well with a more familiar looking livery as he's currently sitting P31. Now we do have from uh, P32 to P35 those cars are out at the moment unfortunately due to either some early incidents or any disconnects on the starting grid which uh, I feel terrible for but um, these things happen in racing, unfortunately, and uh, well, as we know, that errors do happen when things are live. So, let's look at some of the uh, statistics, shall we say, on the grid then at the moment. So, at the minute, your top overtaker is uh, Mr. Jay Corley here, and uh, he's done an absolutely fantastic job at basically just keeping on top of things and monitoring every situation as it comes, and he's kept in front of cars and taken advantage of many situations. So he's done a top, top job in that result. K 
car livery there as he comes around in P22 currently. I do see a little bit of movement in the back. Uh, we do have a Mr. Robert Williams on track. So he's in P33, but he is on track. Currently on the same lap as Van der Waals there as uh, he goes around. Car number 17. Daniel Sedgley, number 7 for the Olympus Esports. Uh, as he comes around for P31. So they are a lap down. However, they are doing a... Uh, Solid job at trying to get into the race and just maintain a, the position they've got for now and just get the laps in um, and just sort of get used to the car because this is the best time for testing, really. And uh, someone that is really testing their car is Dan Mulder, who's just set the quickest lap of the race and is closing down on Stephen Fry. And, uh, well, QI wouldn't be too happy about that when they hear Stephen Fry's losing a bit of pace to Dan Mould as we look up into the bank to right hand and out and around with a beautiful lake in the background there. I'm sure it's top fish in there. Top carp. And, uh, well, Mr. Mould is looking for a top catch to move himself into P8. He's looking to try and get the move to Stephen Fry. Sort of look towards the inside there, but then backed out, possibly trying to put Mr. Stephen Fry off and pull him away from his QI question cards. But... Alton Park so far has delivered. It's given us some great action. And, uh, well, at the minute it is the battle between the Hondas and the Hyundais. They seem to be the two cars that are intermixing a lot on this grid so far. But a wonderful job once again from Mr. Thurtles. We jump on board with him here in P1. I think he may have had a little bit of a slip up somewhere along the way because Adam Delmont is within a tenth of Mr. Thurtle, so things are starting to heat up. Let's jump in with uh, Mr. Delmont, and you can see sort of how close things are. Maybe we have the commentator's curse because it seems like every time we jump aboard with someone, they slowly back off the car ahead. So I think we're actually causing some of these drivers some grief here, as you can see how much currency you have to use on the entry of some of these corners, trying to keep up with someone like. After that, or you really have to throw this car almost into a drift into the entry of some of these corners. And it, while it's not easy to keep control of, well, at least not for me, I'm not Lewis Hamilton by any means, but it's not the easiest car to uh, keep putting in the right direction. I know the front wheel drives, so they're easier to stop yourself from spinning out. But when it comes to entering corners at high speed and maintaining that momentum, um, as these two are doing so well in the top half of the field, then, um, well, they do it much better than me, let's just say that. With a fantastic looking uh, livery as well from Mr. Thurtle there in the front. And it's, uh, it's a lot more shiny than the uh, normal livery we've seen Thurtle run in in previous seasons. But it's good to see him back out on track. We were talking about him the other day actually wondering what he's up to these days. As uh, we haven't got anyone in any categories yet. But Mr. Thurtle's banner has reminded me of something. So we don't have classes right as of now. Um... But these media days, we will be sort of looking at who's doing what. And uh, you'll see the relevant classes released at a certain point in the future. So keep an eye on the SRL Discord for any information into the TCRs at all. Um, whether it's results or just chatting with some of the racers. Or just jumping in to see what SRL has up their sleeve next. Because I tell you what, it is a whirlwind in there and it's fantastic to see these guys have come out once again and decided to put on a fantastic league with 40 plus people in and ready to go uh, obviously not all of them able to make it tonight some have had some issues in the build up to this but we are looking to have a jam packed season so it's going to be fantastic and I wish my voice box all the best with this season because it is not going to be easy at all with these guys going around uh, well how tight they are at the minute it's not going to be easy at all as we look back down here and Deju is going for the move up the inside on the Blade Designs car of Chris Barnes there. Doesn't get the move, loses the momentum though and he's going to be swallowed up by like three or four cars on the straight down to the left-hander before another long straight before we hit the lake. And you can see he's having to take the outside line, that could cost him once again. Jay Corley now sniffing and trying to get the attack done. He's looking to get that move sorted before the corner. He's going to have the inside of this left-hander. He's going to station his car in the correct position, I imagine, for the defensive manoeuvre leading into the right-hander. And, well, I don't even think he needed to worry too much because there was a, quite a large gap there. Now it's going to be down to Deck Crowther. Can he take advantage? But it seems like Deju's got their momentum back up into that car now and doesn't seem to be suffering too many issues. Mr. Dan Mould, obviously the, uh, the occasional pun we may or may not have said earlier. 
has uh, managed to pull off an exceptional run and answer one of Stephen Fry's QI questions correctly and got the overtake done. He's won the show and uh, he's currently up into P8. So Neil Stevenson is next on the menu for Mr. Mould. I'm sure he won't be worrying about what's in his mirrors. We'll all be focusing on what is in front. And, uh, well, Jay Corley still has a fight on his hands. Colin Craven just ahead in the, I believe that is the Olympus Esports uh, livery there. The result clothing livery of Jay Corley, though, is uh, sort of tucked up right on the rear end of that car as they come round on to lap eight. All of these cars are now flying by. Um, Daniel Lewis going into the pits, and same with Chris Barnes as well. Uh, there's, there is no mandatory pit stop, so for anyone sitting there wondering, is there a mandatory one? There is no mandatory pit stop. There's only a 20-minute race. But we do have uh, records of these cars going into said pits. Now, the battle is still tight all over the field, really. It is a little bit difficult to keep up with some of these drivers because they are very, very close together. But one of the things to keep an eye on is obviously the winner of this race, or who will be the winner after the next six minutes of racing. And, well, Alpha Thirtle's doing a good job so far at keeping those cars behind him. But the main man of the minute to upset that party is Mr. Adam Delmont, who's shown some incredible pace in recent series of racing in iRacing. Um... I've seen multiple events where Adam Delmont's name is there. It's mentioned it's in the top half of the table. He's in the podium spots regularly. Um, a quality racer. Some really good pace as well. And, well, Delmont is questioning the throne of Arthur Thurtle and his pace. Can he knock that crown off and defeat the man that leads it all at the moment? Obviously, like I say, like we said at the start of the broadcast... This is not for points. Uh, this is more literally just for fun and to iron out any kinks and any bits of rust we might have here and there, such as me with uh, my commentary to bring you guys and keep you guys up to speed with uh, all these fast cars on track. Another minute. Oh, fathel has gone wide, incredibly wide, onto the sand and lost the lead. Adam Delmont takes full advantage of that and he's kept the pressure on and gone through. Arthur, I'm so sorry to do this to you. Please do not hurt me. But you can see that these two are going at it, going down into the left-hander. And to be honest, I'm not, to an unprofessional eye, I'm not 100% sure what happened there. Because it didn't look like there was any lockups or anything on Mr. Thurtle's car. So, but a heavily, heavily wide incident for Thurtle there. And Neil Stevenson just in behind him. And then there he is, the man that's shaping up the uh, second course on his menu, Dan Mould. Looking to try and catch on to Stevenson, get past him, and then the battle of all battles. It'll be Mr. Mould versus Mr. Thurtle. So that will be one to watch, that is for sure. Kim Andre Bjorklund has uh, realised that Adam Delmont is in P1. So he's now going to put the pressure on Adam Delmont and see if Delmont can cope with it as, uh, as Arthur Thurtle did. Now, the more pressure you obviously put on each other throughout the race adds on fatigue and um, well ultimately it's going to wear you out eventually and there's going to be a certain point where you won't be able to take much more um, and any little slip ups can be sort of triggered I, I guess is the best word to put it but Thomas Cope sort of lurking in the background there P3 so he's on the podium at the minute now if these two races in front in P1 and P2 come together then Thomas Cope could take this win here in race 1 and um well, ultimately, be the uh, the laughing man at the end of uh, this race. The number 264 for Olympus Esports. This comes around into the left-hander on to one of the back straights. And uh, he's got the leaders in his sights. The time is, is fluctuating. It comes down more than what it goes up, though. So he is slowly edging closer. There are certain segments where the two in front are marginally quicker, but there's not much in it whatsoever. And we're having all sorts going on towards the back of the field here. Daniel Lewis being one of the people who, as you can see from the picture, in the bottom left corner, is very, very excited to be a part of the SRL Racing Leagues again. He's very excited to be a part of the TCR, so you can see he's ecstatic to be back out there, out on park, racing with uh, some of the people from the SRL team and all the others that have turned up for this event as well. Deck Crowther here 
number 167 with his selfie in the bottom left corner as well. And, uh, well, he's doing a good job at the minute, sitting P18. He's within the top 20. You see there is 35 cars altogether in this race. Obviously, some did not get out at the start of the session. Some had a disconnect, and one or two others just unaccounted for. But P18 isn't a bad start at all. Uh, not a bad way to open up your season, or open up your pre-season, shall we say. We'll call it pre-season for now, and I think it sounds a little better. Um, Craig Walters here with his photo, looking a little like Deck Crowther's father. Um, so, might have to ask if there's any relation there. The surnames don't match up, but you never know. Wild's a funny place. It could could be could be father or son, father or son duo. Fraser Garrity with a, uh, a nice little picture in the bottom left there. But he's having a nice chill race. P21. Four and a half seconds behind Craig Walters. Two and a half seconds between him and the car behind though as well. Daniel Lewis is closing the gap up in the SRL livery. That excitement is just pushing him on to go quicker and quicker every lap. And he's just not stopping. He'll get the position eventually on the number 42 car. But he needs to go for it now. He's got just under two minutes to go. So we need to see that position made, Mr. Lewis. Adam Dalmont still leads the way at the moment, currently in P1. Kim Andre Bjorklund having to do some defensive work now against Thomas Cope in the eSports livery there. And it's not going to be easy to do for the minute and 30 seconds that we have left. And you can see Thomas kind of swerving out. Showing that he's there, reminding him that he's there. Let's have a little look up the field here, though, because you can see Arthur Thurl's really trying to put the pressure on John Brown. Now, I don't want to be one to cause speculation or rumours, but is there a bit, bit of teamwork and a bit of uh, <laughs> a bit of almost rivalry in a way here? Is John Brown holding up Mr. Thurl and giving him a hard time so Dan Mole can get past him? Is that, I mean, I'm sure if I ask him, they'll tell me, no, 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 nothing like that would ever happen. John would probably give me a sarcastic answer. But um, they're all out there having a good time. And while Damold and Arthur Thett are still going side by side at the minute, fighting out for P6 here in the last moments of this race. Take him around into the final corner. Thett on the outside of the track. You, can, you just saw the uh, bonnet of Mr. Mould on the right hand side there as they come around in to the first turn of the final lap now so we are on the final lap of the first race and these guys are still side by side and we're getting up to half a track side by side and there we go now they finally split up and uh, well in fact they don't really split up for much long well for much long if I can English, uh, they don't split up for too long and they're back side by side once again as we come around towards the lake now Going into the right hand, you can see the dust flicking up there. Stephen Fry just on the back end of things. Possibly trying to take advantage if these two come together, which they do have a little bit there, but they're still side by side. Now, this cannot work. Coming into the chicane here is not going to happen. You can see the shape of that arrow. It's not meant to be side by side. They're going to go for it. There's contact. Oh, that mold just keeps it on the track. Arthur Thurl keeps the momentum going, but is that going to bring this battle into a three car battle are they going to go three wide they're not going to do so because Damold defends that line defends p6 is that going to get his nose back out in front though he can't quite do it by the looks of it at the moment we're going to have to rejoin that battle in a second because you have to jump up to the top here and to see adam delmont half a second in front still he's doing a fantastic job in that golden srl livery i think he was kind of predicting that he's going to win this race hence why he put gold on his livery maybe not maybe i'm just causing speculation again but kim andre bjorklund is trying to fend off the position against the olympus esports car there of thomas cope cope isn't going to get the position done but adam delmont is going to come across the line in p1 car number two comes across the line and wins race one here tonight. Kim Andre Bjorkle in P2, Thomas Cope in P3, and then Adam Andy Lovesy comes across in P4. What happened here then with Dan Mould? Dan Mould did become victorious over Mr. Thurtle and uh, John Brown finishing P5 there as well. So those guys, uh, maybe they did work together to keep Mr. Thurtle back. Maybe not. <laughs> there's a bit of a friendly bump there between uh, Thurtle and Mould, which I'm sure they're having a laugh about in the voice chat that they're all in there at the minute as well. Philip Grace coming across in P11, car number 41 there, which I have to admit has quite a nice delivery. I do quite like the look of that. Chris Barnes in p27 at the moment a bit further down the grid 
But nevertheless, he's still running because there are several cars that are unfortunately not running anymore. So let's catch up with the YouTube chat just while we wait for Christopher Barnes and anyone else to finish off. Um, one more to go, Stu. Hope he wasn't showing for you. Uh, Pre-season friendly, uh, can they be any more side by side? Honestly, I don't think they could. And the paint situations do could have been because of uh, my end. We were having some issues uh, before this broadcast went up, so that's probably more on my end than it is yours. So I, w I won't worry about that. But I do apologise if your livery wasn't showing here tonight. And Chris Barnes rounds off our race one here with a P27 overall. So let's bring you the results of race one and uh show you guys what happened out there on track so adam delmont was your winner kim andre bjorkland p2 thomas cope rounding off the podium p3 he tried to get that late move done but not quite good enough unfortunately it wasn't quite enough before the end and um he rounds off your top three and he loves p4 john brown p5 dan mold p6 alpha thirtle p7 stephen fry p8 Mark Draper, P9. Neil Stevenson, rounding off your top 10. Philip Grace, P11. Patrick Falconer, P12. Scott Malcolm, P13. Anna McCain, P14. Stuart Gibbons, P15. Jay Corley, P16. Uh, Ricardo Neto, P17. As we scroll down the field a little bit more. Deck Crowther, P18. Fraser Elphick, P19. Craig Walters finished off the top 20. Fraser Garrity, P21. Uh, P22 is Joe Pirro. Daniel Lewis, then Grant Yingling, and then Deju Boris Barnes. That runs up your top 27 there. Daniel Sedgley, Connor Craven, David Van der, uh, oh, Van der Walls. Uh, again, I do apologise for any uh, mispronunciations of any names here tonight. And then after that, we do have Danny Fury Martin, Robert Williams, Stuart Rice, Adam McNally, and... The only Aussie that was out there tonight, whose name has been cut off, unfortunately, but Tyson Hanmer, uh, we know you're here, so you are appreciated, and thank you very much for staying up at what I'm assuming is a very late time for you. So uh, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. So we are currently in our five-minute warm-up, and while we're in this warm-up, please, 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 could you drop a like on the broadcast here tonight and if you have any feedback into the uh, commentary you've seen tonight or into the broadcast or anything you would like to see new or changed on this channel on this season uh, as we bring it to you here live um, please do let us know jump in the discord for the srl team and uh, let us know your thoughts and your views on it uh, we're open to constructive criticism and uh, look forward to pushing on with you guys as well. But yeah, pre-season friendly, very much so. Uh, that is what it is. This is fun. 20 minutes of practice uh, to go with it. Well, Mr. Cope, you had a fantastic race. Uh, unfortunately, that move right at the end on the final turn wasn't quite enough, but it kept us on the edge of our seats right till the bitter end. Uh, it's fine. I DNF'd anyway. Uh, well, why did you DNF, Stu? What happened? Tell us. Got to keep us updated in this stuff. But two minutes to go in the warm-up now. And, uh, well, I am going to want to talk to, I think, Mr. Mould and uh, Mr. Mould and Mr. Thurl, at least, um, when they uh, finish off their races here tonight. Because I want to know, was that a friendly bump at the end? Or was that a bit of revenge? Was, that, was there a bit of spite in it? And also, those that are in the YouTube chat, obviously, don't forget, like and subscribe on this stream for us. It does help massively uh, with everything that we have going on, and it fills the team with uh, great joy to see that you guys are enjoying the content that is brought to you. But get your predictions in the YouTube chat. We do have just over one minute to go, so let us know who you think is going to win the next race. We do have a uh, Senor Patrick Faulkner out there at the minute. 
Uh, we're just over a minute to go. We will uh, have Mr. Falconer going round, getting in some last-minute practice before this second race coming up here tonight on the SRL TV channel. Obviously, if you do want to get involved in the SRL TCR race, it's not too late to reach out. You can always reach out to us, and um, I'm sure either John or Dan will get back to you or whoever, whoever else is helping manage this league, and uh, they'll reach out to you and give you all the information that you may need. But it is a fantastic season to get involved with. Um, it is an absolutely incredible journey. And I'm looking forward to sharing it all with you. And I had the privilege of being chosen to broadcast this for you guys as well. So uh, looking forward to some great racing as the season pushes on. So Stuart Rice, because I can't drive the car, couldn't get on with it. Uh, that was it. Not worth racing the next one. I have Sebring tomorrow, so muscle memory is... Ah, that's fair enough. You have the big race tomorrow, which, again, I'm looking forward to. Um, so that'll be a nice watch. Top 15 reverse. Um, I believe so. Oh, here we go. The five minutes have lapsed. We'll just wait for the grid to come up. And here it is. So Fraser Elphick starts off the race in P1. Deck Crowther P2. Ricardo Neto P3. Jay Corley P4. Stuart Gibbons. Alan McCain. Scott Malcolm. Patrick Faulkner. Philip Grace. Neil Stevenson ran off top 10. Mark Draper and Stephen Fry. The top 12 positions there. As we scroll through. Arthur Thurtle. Dan Mould. Followed by John Brown. Andy Lovesey. Thomas Cope. Kim Andre Bjorklund. Adam Delmont. Craig Walters. Fraser Garrity. Joe Pirro. Uh, Daniel Lewis. Grant Yingling. Um, JB Deju, Boris Barnes, Sedgley, Craven, uh, Van der Waals, Danny Fury Martin, Robert Williams, Stuart Rice, Adam McNally, and Tyson Hanmer. I apologize how quick I had to go through that. We don't want to miss the race start. And uh, as we focus on Fraser Elphick here on P1 of the grid, let's see what's going to happen as the lights are getting ready to go. Five red lights, and we are underway. Bit of smoke there in the background. Not as much smoke up front uh, compared to what we saw in race one. Now, what we'll do is we will jump to the blimp view, and you'll see all these cars going a bit bumper to bumper into the first turn as we look a bit further down the grid as well. They're all getting through nice and safely by the looks of it. A bit of side by side there, back there by Deju as well. I think from the looks of things. Oh, we do have one car off, unfortunately, at the minute. I think that was Craig Waters, possibly. Oh, there's cars off everywhere. It is shenanigan central out there at the moment. We'll have a look back at some of those a bit later on as these cars do get underway for the second race of the evening. Here is Mr. Deju at the minute in amongst this battle uh, for P26. Uh, that, sorry, that's that's a lie. It's kind of a battle for the P20 at the minute, but there's cars all over the place. Unfortunately, Deju has been spun or tapped in the rear end and then spun back onto the track and have been collected by about four or five different cars. Unfortunately, Ricardo Neto is um, the person with the biggest amount of over losses, should we say, at the moment. I don't really like using losses, um, but in that yellow and green once livery, down 18 positions at the moment. Not a good start for Ricardo Neto, but could potentially bring it back. There is pace within that driver and within the, that car as well. But first of all, you've got to defend Boris from behind. Not going to be an easy customer to deal with there whatsoever. As you can see, the uh, sand and dirt uh, flicking up there on the inside of the corner as we go underneath the Carlo Bridge. On the back straight. Deck Crowther currently leading the race. Jake Hawley just in behind him. Obviously going to be pushing on for that P1 position. But remember, it's still early in the race. Very early in the race. Within the first couple of minutes here. As we get round on to lap two. As they all come around to start finish straight. Deck Crowther has a lot of work on his hands to keep this P1. To keep this race win. It's not going to be easy. But if he can just get his head in the game. And just focus on what's ahead of him rather than behind. Um... I know Deck Crowther, uh, I'd say fairly well. Um, I've seen that that guy has some pace when he does get his head into it. Um, but it's very easy to lose control of that and to lose your head, obviously, when you're doing so well. Any minor slip-up and you could send yourself 
sort of crazy, really, with how angry you get at yourself. But the Blades Designs livery car is going to, I'm sure, fly through this course here tonight. As you can see, the gap is slowly extending between him and Jay Corley. Let's see what he can do as he's uh, oh, the gap's kind of closed up a little bit in that chicane. That may not have been the best exit there for Mr. Crowther. And Drake Hawley's going to try and get around on the outside of the initial corner onto the second chicane as they come through that nicely and onto the fast right hander that you have to kind of push out onto the rumble strips. And then I don't know what you call them. You've got the rumble strips, and then I want to call them the traffic light stops is what I call them, which is the uh, circular rumble strips, um, which seem to give a bit more of a bump and slow you down a little bit more. But yeah, I call them the traffic light stops because they look like the little circles you get um, for the blind just at each traffic stop. Traffic stop, traffic light, apologies. Um, so yeah, you kind of have to force yourself out onto them on the exit of that right hand as you come up sort of the back end of the track. And it does slow the pace down a little bit, but the, I believe the faster line is going over that. And uh, that's what these drivers are opting for. So the quickest lap of the race so far is a 1 minute 45. Let's see if anyone can change that. Is there a battle going on between these two? Not really. There's a little bit of a gap between Dan Mild and Alpha Thurtle in a minute. But I think things could get a little feisty between those two if they get any closer. I think John Brown, yeah, he's been caught up in a little bit of a... Uh, nonsense here instead of the uh, right hand side of his car smirking it's now the left hand side of his car smirking so the car number 26 is uh, slowly cruising around and uh, he's testing the off-road capabilities of the Audi because well I'm assuming the dealership told him that they're going to be pretty damn good um, as they come around on to lap 3 the result clothing car still in P2 Jay Corley's kind of wanted to make a move and uh, well I if, if I was Jay, I would probably be sitting behind Dick Crowther right now. Get used to him for a couple of laps and uh, see where his weaknesses are and uh, see where you could possibly get a move and find his strong points and try and use that to your advantage. Try and copy everything that Mr. Crowther's doing. But then again, I'm talking like he's not doing that already. I'm sure Jay Corley is doing that at the moment and really trying to give him a run for his money. There's more contact in the background there. That's Neil Stevenson off into the wall um, maybe a minor scrape into the wall I did hear um, quite a large crashing sound in the background but then again I reckon he does like to uh, exaggerate some sounds should we say on this thing so uh, doesn't look too uh, performance impact and then again I've just seen a view from front on and I would say it is because that left wheel is not pointing straight that is not pointing straight at all so uh, that's going to call for a pit stop I believe from Mr. N Neil Stevenson. I nearly got his name wrong because I nearly said it back to front. I was about to say Steel Nevenson. But luckily I didn't. However, he's not going to. Oh, he is going to go for a pit stop. <laughs> Just got on the wrong side of Kim Andre Bjorkland there. And, uh, well, Mr. Bjorkland is a car that I do see regularly in several different series. And you can see he's had a bit of a tasteful back end for some of these other racers out there who have gone just plowed straight into the back of him. He's currently sitting down P24 overall, but the Norwegian is going to push on, and we do have a car currently off track. I think there's Mark Draper at the minute going off track for the entirety of the back straight. I think just letting all the cars pass and waiting to enter the track safely again, and oh, that could have been an interesting one. I did think for a second there there was going to be a bit of chaos. Which involves that rather nice blue car just up just behind Kim Andre Bjorkland. Um, unfortunately, it looks like Stuart Gibbons is also out as well. There's a lot going on. It's, it's difficult <laughs> to keep up with a lot of the stuff that is happening out there on track. There seems to be more stuff going on in the, the background of things now than what there was before. Let's have a little look at what happened to Mr. Gibbons because we just had that he had an off track. Oh yeah, that's a bit of a bit of puncture there, but. Can't park there, sir, as he uh, goes straight back to the pits after that little incident there with the tyres. And uh, unfortunately, that fight, Gibbo, you tried to enter one on one, and uh, well, you didn't come out victorious in that one. So uh, he's going to go back into f the pits for repairs, and hopefully, we see him back out on the track again. We call them the landmines. Okay, that's probably better than what I call them because, I, yeah, I call them the, uh, the stops. Um stop circles 
because that's what you see at every traffic light, so uh, that's what I tend to go for. But Adam Dalmont at the minute is not thinking about stopping any time soon. Car number two is sitting there behind the number 80 of Dan Mould. They're all fighting within the top 10 at the minute. Stephen Fry also just in the background there, P11, just outside the top 10. He's trying to work his way into it, and no doubt he will with this battle between Arthur Thurtle and what was Scott Malcolm. Um, however, Thurtle has got ahead of Scott Malcolm and uh, is slowly pulling away. Brakes on fire for all these cars at the minute. So I believe some of them do like to turn their brake bars back just a tad in these vehicles. And I believe it does help quite considerable amount with the handling. As the number 27 car of Mr. Thurtle goes through once again and starts to gain a little bit of a gap now is going to put the hunt on for philip grace to try and get that p6 position now, there's one thing we are seeing a little bit different to uh what we saw before obviously after the uh had a lovely livery which i believe if i'm not mistaken after will probably correct me if i'm wrong but uh i believe it was his grandfather's uh, racing livery the one that he raced i'm sure all around the country and done very well in it no doubt um, but he had a beautiful looking livery last time we saw him on a TCR. This time it's something similar, but also different at the same time. Uh, it was blue and it did have the circle in the middle, but it didn't say SRL TCR. But it was a nice classic looking livery. And uh, well, he's done a fantastic job on that one as well. Uh, Van der Waals has unfortunately crashed. Let's have a little look at what's gone on here. Uh, you can see the steering is completely off for that Olympus eSports car. Kind of a 17 there. The Dutchman hasn't really got any choice but to go back to the pits, so he pulls off in a safe manner and does so as he sits there waiting the tow truck. Let's jump back to the leader of this race because we don't want this to go uncovered uh, because the last thing we need is uh, to have Mr. Crowther on my back. But um, he's doing a fantastic job at the moment, to be fair. He's 1.8 seconds ahead of the pack at the moment. Jay Corley in behind there. Let's have a little look from Jay Corley's point of view on uh, where we are going to be sitting facing deck. You can see he's, he's in the distance. There's a bit of a gap between them. But if I was Jay Corley right now, I'd be like, yes, I can catch this guy up ahead. If this was a, uh, a if that wasn't deck Crowther ahead of me, I'd probably be like, yes, I can catch this person. But I'm nowhere near as quick as deck. So I would never be saying that to him. As um, Jay Corley is trying to get the fight on the car number 89. He's trying to get on to the rear end of Mr. Crowther and try and get that position done. It's not going to be easy. Someone needs to cut the trees back because my cameras can't see through them. Alan McCain currently in P3. He rounds off your podium spots as we just go over the halfway mark in this race. Now just behind him, Patrick Faulkner and Fraser Elphick are going to be battling it out now. Fraser does have the black and gold SRL livery as well. He is going to be looking to hold on to that P4 position. Maybe even, you know, if he concedes the position and moves down to P5, it might not be a bad thing. He might be able to use Faulkner's pace to get him up to the podium spots and try and take two for the price of one. Uh, there's nothing like a cheeky meal deal to get you into the top three. So I'm sure he'll be looking at those buy one, get one free offers as he holds on to his P4 currently and maintains that gap equidistant almost between the car in front and behind. You can see car number 15 looking fantastic as the uh, sun sitting rather low over Alton Park at the moment. You can see it reflecting beautifully there as they come into the first of two chicanes. Mr. Crowther, once again, is pulling away further and further as time goes on. Adam Delmont has uh, some stuff going on back here as well. He is the other black and gold livery of the SRL team. And uh, you've got Mr. Mould just in behind him, who's rounding off your top 10. A bit of, bit of scrape damage. and well, In fact, never mind. It looks like he's wrapped it around a tree on the front of Dan Mould's car. I think that tends to be a standard. Any kind of contact, it always looks like you've just put it around a lamppost. So um, I'm sure that isn't going to be too performance impeding for Mr. Mould. But he's going to be trying to get up and further into the top 10 to really solidify that position for race two as we progress on through the 12th minute now. Not long left to go at all for the uh, fun night. Rounds off and the sun sets here in Alton Park as Adam Delmont goes for the move, gets the inside line done and Dan Mole takes advantage as well and makes the move 
well, set perfectly, really. Um, pretty much made me speechless, to be honest, how smoothly that went. Um, it was like Scott Malcolm offered him a ticket to go and see his favourite football team. He snatched it out of his hands before even saying thank you, and he's out the door. So um, Dan Mould has gone through and uh, said, cheerio, chap, and uh, gone off into the distance a little bit there as Andy Lovesy sort of catching on into the background now as well. P11 and P12 of Stephen Fry. Those guys are sort of chumming along just behind, maintaining that pace that they need. Daniel Centrally back here. He's kind of at the back of an Olympus Esports sandwich. He's the bottom layer of bread. And you've got Fraser Garrity in between that. Fraser Garrity being the fill-in goes for the defensive move or position into the bank to right-hander as they come into the first chicane. Can he hold off? an Audi and then attack another Audi that is going to be the question it's not going to be an easy job to do but you can see the lovely pink blue and yellow livery of the Olympus esports teams here are going they're doing well uh, as a team overall you know we're seeing them quite a lot in the broadcast we're seeing them in good positions as well they're really getting their stuff done here tonight they came into this series they meant business and it might be media day but they're going for it and they're having a good time while doing so as well so they're doing a wonderful job there. But Fraser Garrity is doing a fantastic job at being a slice of ham between two Audi cars as they come around into the two quick right-handers before the final straight of the lap. Kim Andre Bjorklund just a bit further down behind Connor Craven and Grant Yingling. And uh, he's not doing too terribly. He's got a bit of rear-end damage. I don't know how impeding rear-end damage is on TCRs. So hopefully it's not terrible and uh, he can get the pace up a little bit but he is within the top 20 uh, Boris being the 20th car overall Thomas Cope unfortunately is into the pits so he is slowly cruising his way down the field Joe Pero comes across the line moves up into P20 due to the uh, Mr. Cope in the pit lane Daniel Lewis in his sincere, sincere excitement goes a little bit wide uh, that excitement is sort of pushing him off the track and uh, getting him to jump on the accelerator a bit too quickly I think here's Mr. Robert Williams um, he is the boss and uh, well the owner should we say of the Kraken Racing team uh, this is the second time I think I've seen this logo. I saw it behind the scenes the other day but this is the first time I've seen it out on track and it looks absolutely fantastic so Shout out to Blade Designs for livery making there and Rob Williams for representing obviously your own brand and, um, well, pushing out there with what is a beautiful livery. I'm sure you uh, contributed to the design. So, fantastic job from those involved with that. And he chases down Joe Piro at the minute with Daniel Lewis sort of in behind, unfortunately. A little bit of a slip up earlier, probably getting a bit of a slowdown as he went wide into turn one. The milky bar <laughs> picture of Neil Stevenson. Bottom left corner there, he comes through P23 at the moment, leading into the second uh, chicane as he gets into the breaking zone, curves around. John Brown just a little further back. Now, John Brown has decided to grow a massive white moustache and grow out his eyebrows since we last saw him on tracks. So you can see a photo there that we got of him just before he put his helmet on. Before the race, uh, we did advise him to at least comb the eyebrows back a little bit but um, he refused and said he can see fine so that could explain why he's in P24 currently because uh, the eyebrows might be taking advantage of the situation they do at the minute obviously an earlier instant in the race he's having a fantastic time they're just sort of cruising around in P25 but he hasn't got to worry about anyone this is the prime time though because obviously there's no points to worry about you don't need to worry about finishing in a mega high position you need to, one, enjoy yourself, but two, test the car, test your limits. You know, can you push this corner a little bit further? Can, is there a certain sound you've got to look out for before you need to start pulling back a little bit? You know, there's all these little things you need to sort of listen out for and look out for. And uh, I'm sure these guys will be doing just that as uh, this is the prime time to do it. The uh, number 80 car of Mr. Dan Mould is currently sitting P8 overall just ahead of Mr. Thurtle. Are these two going to clash heads once again and interlock horns into the last few laps of this race? And we are in the 17th minute out of 20 here tonight. Dermont's still just behind Adam Dermont. Adam Dermont is a force to be reckoned with this season. Probably going to be one of the top runners uh, for the majority of it. Just judging on the pace I've seen as of recently, not just in this race, 
but the uh, overall aspect of the last couple of series that I've seen him in. Uh, Thomas Cope, I'm out. Uh, too much drama uh, plus drive through for incidents. Ah, that's fair enough. It was a bit of a tight track, I have to admit, with 35 cars out there in the field at the moment as well. But what we'll do is we'll possibly take on that feedback and uh, we will uh, pass it on to those that are needing to know and we will inform them for you, sir. But fantastic racing from Mr. Cope there tonight as well. Anyway, uh, especially in race one, we were kept on the edge of our seats with that final push uh, to get higher on the podium. It was a fantastic night for Mr. Cope, though. A uh, wonderful job, sir. So thank you very much for taking part this evening. Connor Craven is going for it, and there's a, a bit of back and forth. But come out on top of those behind, obviously, and uh, Kim Andre Bjorkman is just having to settle in back there. There's a little bit of gap creating itself, but not massive at all. So it is something that can easily turn around. Daniel Sedgley looking to try and get the overtake done on Fraser Garrity, who's just ahead of him there as they come out the right-hander into the first chicane. Now, what is going to happen between these two into the last minute of the race? We haven't got long to go at all. Let's jump back to your race leader at the moment, Mr. Deck Crowther. This will be the second, if he can pull this off, this will be the second race win I've seen him get in the last couple of days. Um, I believe he got one in the Clios the other day, and he could be looking at getting one in the TCRs as well. If he can just fend off Mr. Jay Corley for just one or two more laps, you can see from this view in Jay Corley's car, he is a lot closer now. Like He is in touching distance. He can't push that car too far. He got, he's got to keep it within the limits. And, uh, well, as best as you can, pedal to the metal within reason. You know, you don't want to send yourself off the side of the track right at the end of the race where you can't recover it. So there go your front two. But not too far back from those. You've got Fraser Elphick and Alan McCain at the minute. There are only four temps, now three temps between the two. And there's a second between Alan McCain and Patrick Falconer, who's in P5. So you can see him just in the background here. And uh, well, what view he's having seeing these guys battle just up ahead. But talking of views, this one's probably the best one of the race so far at the minute. Seeing a couple of SRL uh, boots in front of you. Battling it out with um, is that Philip Grace, I believe it is. That is Philip Grace leading this little SRL pack of cars here. The, these two, this uh, duo of car number two and car number eighty, as they go side by side into the chicane. Now, can Dan Mold get that position done? He can't. Settles back in into a sandwich. Dan Mold is kind of pushing him up and trying to get him to get the move done as soon as possible. Dan Mold, obviously, with that slight front end damage is not holding him back at all and there has been some catastrophes up top Deck Crowther and Jay Corley I think they've had a coming together right towards the end right towards the end let's have a little look at what happened here is it going to let me yes it is oh that's just Jay Corley going off track what happened here so they're into the chicane Oh, J. Corley and Deck Crowther do have a little coming together. I think that could have been a little bit of the old famous net code. It's hard to tell because the tyres are in the way right at the vital moment. But I'm sure if we look back at that, you'll be able to see what happened there. But Alan McCain comes across the line and finishes the race in P1. He takes the race win. Fraser Elphick, P2. Patrick Faulkner uh, comes off in P3. Philip Grace, P4. Adam Delmont, P5. Dan Mole, P6. Alpha Thirtle, P7. Annie Lovesy, P8. Stephen Fry, P9. Grant Yingling is going to come across in P13. So we've got Scott Malcolm ran off top 10. Fraser Garrity, essentially there as well and uh, we'll just wait for the rest of the pack to finish off the race and here comes Mr. Williams P18 for the Kraken Racing livery there and uh, it does look truly wonderful in the TCRs that livery I have to admit so once again very well done to all those of you that are out there on track right now with the uh, fantastic looking liveries it was a wonderful Aspect to see them all out there tonight, shining and gleaming in the sun as Mr. Brown drags his heavy eyebrows and moustache across the line in P22. We told him he should have shaved his eyebrows down from those thick white bushes as you can see in the bottom left corner. He didn't want to listen, 
he went out there anyway and look what happened he done this to himself p22 overall but what a, what a good race from everyone as well and deju as well for keeping in it after that incident right at the very start keeps going and manages to get a decent result out of it by the end so let's have a look at your results for the feature race then here so alan mccain came across the line in p1 fraser elphick p2 patrick falconer p3 philip grace p4 then you have adam delmont p5 dan mold p6 alpha thurtle p7 andy lovesey p8 then you have Stephen Fry, P9, Scott Malcolm, P10, Fraser Garrity, P11, Daniel Sedgley, P12, Grant Yingling, P13, Kim Andre Bjorklund, P14. Uh, I'm, we're going to go with Christoph Boris. I'm, apologies if I got that wrong, but P15 overall. Jay Corley, P16. Robert Williams, P17. And then we have Daniel Lewis, P18. Joe Pirro, P19. Neil Stevenson, P20. That runs off your top 20 cars there. Then we've got Connor Craven, John Brown, Deck Crowther with that unfortunate incident towards the end. Deju, Neto, Walters and Martin. And then from P28 down, we do have Thomas Cope, Chris Barnes, Stuart Gibbons, David Van Der Vaas and Mark Draper, Stuart Rice, Alan McNally. And then we do have our Australian of Tyson Hanmar, who I don't believe went out for the second race there of the evening so with all the racing pretty much said and done now we do have uh well what was a fantastic night of racing overall and uh well i do want to get a couple of people talking to me here because there was some interesting situations to say the least and um well, I think one person I'd like to get in here, if possible, if this is going to let me, will be uh, Mr. Mould. Let's see if we can get a hold of Mr. In fact, we'll get Mr. Thurtle first. We'll get Arthur Thurtle first, shall we? And uh, we'll see if he wants to uh, come and have a chat with us. And uh, we'll find out what was going on in the, uh, the races there. Was that a bit of friendly rivalry? Or was that a bit of uh, something else? Let's not let me drag people down, unfortunately. So, uh, potentially, no interviews is looking like tonight. I wanted to get hold of um, Mr. Thurtle. And I would jump in there with them, but there is a lot of people in there. So, I don't think it'll be that quiet. Uh, here we go. We can jump down. Oh, no. In fact, we can't. It's uh, it's completely locked down. So we can't jump down in, into the room with Mr. Thurtle either. It's not letting us do that at all. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll jump into another channel. We're, we're desperately trying to get hold of Mr. Thurtle here. Let's jump into uh, the general here and uh, get him to join us. Here he is, Mr. Thurtle himself. How are we doing, sir? I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, not bad, not bad. It's good to see you back out on uh, on track with us once again. It's been a, it's been a little while. Yeah, it's been a little while. I can't. I, uh, I think it was October time, I reckon. So yeah, it's probably been a good six months. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, is it nice to be back? Oh, the the race is nice. To, the racing is good. I don't like the TCL still, but the the racing is always fantastic in SRL. I don't know if you picked it up on the stream, but in the first race, me and Dan done a whole lap side by side. And we done a, a half a lap again in the second race side by side. Uh, yeah, you just yeah the the racing is in here is probably good. Yeah, it, it certainly looked it out there tonight. It was um, a top quality job. But one question I do have is: uh, Do you feel like there could have been a little bit of um... I wouldn't say hatred, but friendly rivalry between you, John Brown, and Dan Mould there, because there was a segment there where it looked like Mr. Mr. Brown was kind of holding you up a little as you came into the second second chicane there, and uh, Dan Mould managed to get up alongside you as well. There was a lot of scraping going on, so it, it kind of looked from our angle like there was a bit of teamwork going on there between you, and uh, it kind of worked out, well, really well for them, and uh, didn't pose you any favours. 
John Brown's always a rolling roadblock. He wasn't doing it to help Dan. It's just the way he is. That's just the way he drives in general. That's, that's, <laughs> fair, that's fair enough. He's always really good. It's always good fun trying to get past John. He defends well, John does. Yeah. He doesn't do anything silly. He places his car in the right place. Uh, but yeah, it's just the way. That's that's just how he is. He, I, he, would, he wouldn't have been doing it to help Dan out, I don't think. Uh, if anything, he'd, he'd have probably liked to have seen me beat Dan. But there you go. Uh, it, was, it was a good laugh to watch it. And, uh, well, the other thing I want to ask is... That little side by side nudge we saw at the end of race one was that was that a bit of a payback for you and Mould was it? No, nah, that was me messed about. I said to Dad, I said, right, I'm going to create a bit of drama for the screen and for the stream and slammed into his door. Yeah, that is the uh, first thing we <laughs> well, saw after was, people cross the line was you back. slamming. Yeah, I thought it'd create a bit of drama, but no, Dad knew I was about to do it. Oh, that's all right then. I just did it for the drama. So, is this is this going to be a one off thing for uh, for your yourself or are you going to be are you going to be back for more are you in this season with us i'll do the other two i'm i'm waiting to move house and the house i'm moving to needs doing up so the rig's going to be in storage for a little while so there's, i won't i won't be entering the league i'm i'm just waiting for a moving date really so i'll probably be in the next two uh the three races and then I, oh yeah that'll be it for me until the end of the summer probably well, fingers crossed, obviously, you have uh, a good move, and obviously we wish you all the best with that, and good luck with uh, everything. Hopefully the date comes soon, and uh, we can get that sorted, and well, hopefully see you behind the wheel of the TCR again. Is there anything else yeah. you would like to say, or anyone you want to give a shout-out to before you leave us here in the booth today? I'd like to shout-out everyone at SRL, because I, I haven't really done anything with it for the last six months. I've chatted to a few of the guys every now and then. But oh, it's just the, the racing in here is is so good. Any, anyone watching that fancies that joining in, this 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 is a good league to join. If you even if you're a novice, there's so many guys in here covering a whole range of abilities that you will have someone to race with. And if you if you just want to race clean, you know that's 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 fine. You'll you'll get on with everyone in here and you'll have fun. Well, I appreciate your words there. So thank you very much for that. I'm going to let you get off on your way and uh, hopefully go and enjoy the rest of your evening. But fantastic racing once again here tonight. And, uh, well, thank you very much for coming and joining us. Thank you. Well done with the stream. Thank you very much. So we are just waiting on Andrew Lovesey. We have uh, given him a little poke and a prod to see if he will come and join us here in the uh i would say in the commentary booth but in another location <laughs> trying to uh get him to come down and uh join in with us however it's not proven to be that easy so just wait give him a second or two to see if he'll jump in but i'd like to just reiterate while we are sitting here and waiting that obviously if you guys want to get involved in this race and at all in any way shape or form or just have some questions for any of the srl team please do um Jump in, let us know, and uh, you know we can uh, try and answer the question as best as possible. Andrew Lovesy has joined those that are in the iRacing chat. I don't know if we have anyone else jumping down from an interview by the looks of things. No, it doesn't look that way. So what we will do then is we will look on to the next race. We'll get the race info back up on the screen here, so you can see the next race is at Rod Skogan, as it says at the bottom. So obviously. Come join us for that one. And uh, we might actually have might have a uh, Andrew for the end here, but he, he keeps jumping into the uh, incorrect space, unfortunately. So I'm not too sure if we'll grab him in time or not. But we will uh, round off here then. And uh, what we'll do is we'll see you all at Rudd Skogan for the next round. Obviously, there are no points up for grabs here tonight. And there weren't. There are going to be no points up for grabs at Rudd Skogan either. It's all for fun and enjoyment. So hopefully we will see you all there again soon. And I can see they're doing some work at the moment. They're saying now, so let's see if it can work. There we go. Oh, we it does work. We do have a uh, Andrew with us. Andrew, are you there, sir? I am. Yeah. Hello. You're Hello. Right. Yeah. I'm not too bad. Yourself? Yeah, I've given up. I was sat in the uh, waiting room. <laughs> Jump back in the general chat. 
<laughs> yeah, there's there's all sorts going on tonight, but it's all the uh, fun of uh, showbiz, shall we say. Um, well, let's start off then with your thoughts on the racing overall tonight. Obviously, there's a lot of cars out there on track. It's a narrow track. How did you find it with the other 34 cars? Yeah, it was good. I think quality was always going to be difficult uh, with that many cars on track, trying to find a bit of clean space. Um, didn't qualify too badly. I think there's a couple that qualified a bit f further down that should have been further up, which made the race exciting. Um, but yeah, I thought the racing, I, I didn't see many incidents happen. So I think uh, as first races go with that many cars, I think it went pretty well. And so your name isn't one I'm very familiar with. So tell me, are you familiar with tcrs themselves have you been racing for very long or is this just something fresh you wanted to give a shot at tonight uh well, I, <laughs> I founded srl with dan uh probably about i think it's about 10 years ago nearly now um but i haven't been racing in about nine months i was racing regularly before um but i haven't been in the rig for about nine months so tonight was the sort of first night back um but it's just good to be racing back with the lads really um and uh, i was quite surprised it wasn't too far off the pace so um yeah yeah not too bad at all and obviously welcome back after being away for nine months it probably feels a little bit weird sitting back in the rig again and uh flying around a, a track that's uh, as challenging as Alton park because it's not the easiest one in the world um but looking into the next next week's uh fun race we we do have rod scogan are, are you confident on this track because it's a bit like marmite for a lot of people you either love it or hate it what are your feelings towards that um, I remember racing the track when it first came out, uh, but I haven't actually driven it since. So um, it will definitely be uh, definitely be an interesting one. Um, but yeah, just keep my uh, I'll keep my finger away from the um, uh, the pit uh, limiter button like Fertz uh, unfortunately pressed in uh, in that race, um, and I should be all right hopefully. I mean that does sound like it was an absolute catastrophe <laughs> if that was the case. Um... Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I had to get that one in there because uh, he's a bit of a plonker, but yeah. Oh, so you, you're getting... <laughs> okay, so it might be a fun race, but it seems like already starting a few rivalries up there as well. So uh, that's going to be interesting to see you two at Rudd's Gogan going head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Well, before I let you uh, go off on your way, is there anyone else you would like to shout out or give a mention to while you're in the booth here with us? Uh, obviously to yourself, I'm looking forward to uh, to watching it back, um, to uh, JB and Dan for uh, putting the league together again. Um, the uh, the SRL leagues have always been fantastic leagues and uh, there's quite a lot of us that know each other and it always makes for good racing. Um, so hopefully this one's as good as all the previous ones have been. Fingers crossed, it's shaping up to be a fantastic season with 40 entrants into the league as well. So it's going to be a fantastic season with some great tracks on the cards as well. Um, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs and fingers crossed you can get yourself back into the rhythm as soon as possible after obviously your, your time away and uh, well, we look forward to seeing you next time round on the track yeah lovely you take care speak to you soon thank you mate now what we're going to do is we are going to grab the, uh, the man the myth and the legend Mr Mould welcome in no, how no, are we don't call me a legend there's far more words you can choose than legend. <laughs> I'm all right, dude. I mean, I th I think between you and Thurtle, I'm sure he could come up with some good words as well for you after <laughs> what I, for after what we had seen uh, both in race one and two. Obviously, you two having some great side by side racing. Um, just give us a little bit of an insight into how that actually felt racing side by side. One for an entire lap in race one, and then half a lap in race two. It's not the first time that me and Ark have gone side by side in a race. I think we did it in the GT4s around uh, Red Bull and we've done it before in a TCR around Zanvoort side by side for the whole lap. And we weren't, we were pushing. Um, he's, we, we, we just know how each other race. I think we've just got that um, uh, respect for each other. And uh, like I say, I've known him for quite a while now. So I know that I can trust him and he knows he can trust me and, that's what happens you know you can have fantastic racing and callum we we were going hammer and tongue at it even though we were racing side by side we were going hammer and tongue um but yeah it was fantastic um i love racing alongside arthur i really do yeah it looked like some uh some top quality stuff it really did and uh well a question i've already asked here tonight as well is um obviously in the next round being rudd scogan 
How are we feeling uh, looking towards that round? Are you kind of looking forward to it? Because I've said this before, it's a bit like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. So where where do you sit on this fence of uh, love or hatred for the track? I actually like the skills. I can't remember if I've done it in the TCR. I'm pretty sure I have. I've definitely done it in the Clio. I've done it in the Mazda. I can't remember if I've done it in the TCR. But yeah, I like it. It's It's got a few oscillations, twisty, twisty uh, section and a nice long straight. So um yeah it's uh i think it's i'm hoping it's a little bit well, it is a bit wider than alton park alton is a very narrow track for 35 plus cars but um as we're going i think it's a little bit smaller is it but yeah we'll see we'll see Wh whatever happens it, there'll be ups and downs as there always is in in tcrs so yeah well uh like i say it's it's a free track so everyone can jump in and hopefully it'll be a big field again yeah, so a question on that as well is um, for any of those people that are looking at possibly getting um, involved in the league, uh, are they still able to do so? Are there still spaces and how would they do that? Well, the league hasn't actually been... Yeah, we are going to start a league, but we haven't actually opened up the channels yet um, in the Discord with the information. Uh, all the tracks have been selected, the dates have been selected. Um, obviously, the guys who have sign up to the to the free league will obviously probably get first choice um well i would imagine that there will be spaces you know we had plus 40 people for this the free for the free events and we had 35 was it 35 drivers we had tonight or 36 drivers. yeah yeah so, 35 yeah there were still spaces there so there's always gonna be people who sign up and you know don't attend um but yeah i would say yeah if you're interested get in the discord put your name down and we'll we'll certainly certainly get you involved 100 percent. so you're looking forward to run to go and it's going to be something a little different obviously for the tcrs um obviously we're possibly going to have some well rather large numbers judging from tonight there as well it's a little bit of a wider track and uh, there's going to be some challenge and breaking zones in that course as well and there's going to be a lot of congestion i imagine with uh, the amount of cars we have on track but ultimately, it's looking like it's going to be a good season and there's going to be some good front runners up there. So my last question about the racing before we get on to your shout outs is um, what do you think of Mr. Delmont's pace? Because I did see you kind of on the tail of him a few times and uh, you guys are going pretty quick around there compared to some of the other cars out on track. Adam's fast. He's no matter what you put him in, he's, he's going to be quick. Um, he's always said that I've got the edge on him on and the TCR, well, not always, but but I haven't, I haven't. He's 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 certainly one of the the top drivers that I've I've come across. Um, and not that's just not Adam. There's 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 plenty of guys in in that league tonight who who showed you know pace. Um, there's plenty of guys in the league who've showed improved pace as well. Um, one one being Jay. Um, as he's proven over the past two weeks in the officials, he's he's gone from being I wouldn't say average, but he wasn't really up there, and now he's fighting up with the, you know, in, in the top split, hitting the top split times, you know, the fastest lap times as well. Um, Dan Lewis, another one. When Dan Lewis first started racing with us, he, he was nowhere, literally nowhere, and all of a sudden, I even said to him tonight, I said, Who, "Who's driving your car tonight, Dan?" You know, um, but like I say, Andy loves he's come in as well hasn't been on our racing for god knows how long and jumps into a tcr and he's setting optimal laps um so yeah it's i think the more you race with people who are competent in a car you become a better driver because you do naturally learn off people and people obviously explain you know where they're going wrong and this that and the other and you take it on board and you say you, you do become quicker it's like in anything you, you play in a good football team you you, you become a better player then goes to the racing. You race with good, fast drivers. You become a better and faster driver. Um, and we are a very open community where, you know, we will share information like braking zones, what I'm doing with the bias, this, that, and the other. I don't personally. It doesn't bother me. I prefer people to be on good pace and me share the information of what I'm doing. You know, to get them on pace, and that goes for me. I I learn as well. I I learn off drivers who not necessarily on my pace i'll be like bloody hell he's he's taking that call like that oh you know i'm i'm gonna try that and it, it, it does work it works both ways um i will say though 
I've had a quick look at briefly looked at the replays of tonight's racing and there are some moments that we do need to iron out um in the league. Um and surprisingly it's it's not just um I'll say the the latter end of the field, it, it's at the top end as well where there's there's been some people who've done silly and rash things that have ended other people's races that which we are trying to eradicate. Um, I, did, I did try my best to, to educate the guys in the chat before the race went live, just to try and keep it fresh in the mind, you know, <laughs> first lap, go easy guys, you know, cold tyres and then first lap people are getting sent off, but you know, I'll keep at it, I'll keep at it, it's always been a success in the previous SRL league, so I'll keep it going, um, so guys, don't ever get bored of me getting on to you because it'll never stop, and I'm also self-critical as well because I am not the best driver out there. I can easily race with the red mist. So, you know, whatever I say to you, I'm saying to myself as well. But overall, as a league organiser, I'm happy with the turnout. I'm happy with the output getting from, you know, the likes of yourself and the guys in the background. And I'm happy with um, the people who've signed up and shown interest. It's, 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 it keeps you going. You know, we spend, as you know, Callum, we spend a lot of time in the week preparing, yeah. discussing this, that and the other and when people show up like they have tonight and put on a good show for us, it keeps us wanting to do more and more so yeah, I thank everyone for joining, I'm thanking you for doing the broadcast for us, it is highly appreciated and then everybody else who's involved, I want to thank them as well because it is not easy it is not easy, I've spoke to numerous league organisers and it is not easy to run a league. To run a successful league requires time and dedication. And, you know, as a group, a selected group, we are we are going to do it and we are going to have a fantastic league. We yeah, certainly, we certainly are. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, one more thing. Please, 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 please sub to the channel. I keep saying this in my streams. We are trying to build this channel. The bigger it gets, the more exposure it gets, and that can only go for all of us who are involved. So yeah, um, that, that's it for me. I've done my shout outs. Um, I'm going to sit down now and I'm going to watch you do the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, hope you enjoy. There was a couple of slips and trips in there, but obviously it's all part of it, so ah, we'll amazing. get those ironed out. But yeah, it, over, overall, the race I made up for it. It was absolutely fantastic. It was carnage, but at the same time, it was brilliant. It was on the edge of your seat stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to Rod Skogan. Obviously, it's a bit of a wider track, so maybe there'll be a few less collisions. But We'll see. And uh, yeah, what a week we've got building up to the next fun race. Yeah, certainly, mate. Thanks again, mate. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you very much. And uh, well, have a good night. And you. Bye bye. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is basically going to round off our broadcast here tonight. There is uh, no more people waiting for an interview, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to let all you lovely people go and enjoy your evenings now doing whatever it is you plan on doing. Um, we will see you all again very soon in about a week's time at Rudd Skogan for another fantastic show of the Touring Car Championship hosted by SRL. Obviously, we do have some familiar names coming back. We have some new names coming in. And, well, all the in-between as well. Some fantastic races out there. So if you didn't get involved, please get involved. Make sure you subscribe onto the SRL channel. Like the stream. You can go watch Dan's POV as well on the channel so go check that one out but from myself on behalf of the srl team and uh, on behalf of the racers tonight i'd like to thank every single person that attended whether you were watching or racing or even just sort of standing behind your other half who's sitting in the rig and cheering them on in the background we appreciate each and every one of you and uh, as the cars go flying over the barrier we hope you all have a smash and wake and we will see you all again very soon but from me, bye-bye.